There is no light without dark. I think the ancient Chinese nailed it when they put the yin and yang together. You have the black and the white and they flow into each other and there's a little bit of white in the black, there's a little bit of good in the evil and there's a little bit of evil in the good. And if life is perfect all the time, you don't appreciate anything. I actually think one of the worst lives you can have is a life where everything goes right all of the time. If you're spoiled to that degree, especially as a man, as soon as you reach any kind of difficulty, you're gonna crumble. Somebody said to me before, they lack energy and they lack motivation. And I said, nobody lacks energy and motivation. Mm. You just focus it in the wrong directions. I would guarantee if you find a person who lacks energy and motivation, he's trying to get girls all day, he's messaging girls on Instagram all day who ignore him. I guarantee he gets road rage when somebody cuts him up. No, you get angry mm. and you have energy and you have motivation when somebody pulls in front of you in traffic or when you see some on Instagram, but you don't have motivation to do anything else. You don't like energy and motivation. It's pointing in the wrong direction. We all have an innate energy inside of us. We all have a life force. And most people are just directing it in the wrong direction completely. And that's why we're getting decimated in real time. The matrix has come along and it's distracted us all with bread and circuses. And I refuse to do it. I refuse to sign up to things that don't directly benefit my life or benefit the future for my children. I don't think if a sports team wins, it's going to benefit the future for my children. And I don't think if I jump up and down like a f***ing ketamine taking peasant in a concert, it's going to benefit my children. You have 10 years left to save your bloodline from eternal slavery. And you lack motivation? You are born to lose, sir. You are a loser. All of your ancestors who fought saber-toothed tigers should have just laid down and died because they fought their best for you to be born so you can jack off to Pornhub during the last few years where you stand a chance to save your last name from eternal serfdom. You are a and you deserve to be poor. The last thing you should lack in the mess of the world today is motivation because you are running out of time. And I'm telling you as a rich man who made it out, I can see the gap is closing. I can see it. So you should certainly see I'm above in the clouds, looking down on the hole closing in. You're down below looking up, watching it close, and you lack motivation to build a ladder. Oh, well, maybe tomorrow. Doom, doom, doom. Maybe government will save me. Maybe if I vote for the liberals, they'll give me money. <laughs> Slave minds, clowns, fools. The last thing you should lack in the world today is motivation because truly people are running out of time. When you want to explore all the levels on the map of life, you don't just want all the levels at the top. See, this is the mistake most people make. They sit there in a normal life and they dream of being rich and going on nice vacations and dreaming of all the nice things. They don't dream of all the bad things. They think they have all the light with none of the dark. That's not how it works. The only reason you appreciate being rich is because you were poor. If you were born rich, you don't appreciate it. The only reason you appreciate being in good health is because you were once sick. When you're sick, you'll do anything to be healthy. If you've never experienced sickness, you don't know what health is. There is no light without dark. So I've had to get up a bunch of times and I do not pray for an easy life. I pray for a difficult life with difficult challenges to solve and being strong enough to handle them. I've never tried to make my life easier. In fact, quite the opposite. And I think that life is gonna continue along this way. If you really want an exceptional life and to do exceptional things, you can't only hope for the positive exceptional. So if you want the highs, you have to accept the lows. And I want the highs. I wanna make sure my human experience is as varied as possible. So I've had to get up thousands of times and I'm sure I'll have to get up thousands of times more, but I know me as a person and I know I'll never stay down. So I'm not afraid. Well, I think that envy is designed to motivate, but the matrix has taken envy and mm. It's corrupted it. So I, I've always been, I've told this story on other podcasts before, but I've been an envious person. I've told this story because it was so pertinent to me about how most people don't care. I was walking to school. I was walking to Sixth Form College in Lewis. I was 16, 17 years old. And I used to have to walk about an hour each day to school and it was raining and I was walking. And I was walking with three of my friends in a Ferrari. It was an F430, I think, pulled up at the- That was my first Ferrari. Ferrari that yeah, one. yeah. <laughs> pulled up at the lights made a bunch of noise and I was standing there and I watched it and then the light went green and he just tore off. I said to my friends, I was like, bro, how do we get Ferraris? And he's like, what do you mean? I was like, my mom is on a council estate, single mother. She raises three kids on 300 pounds a month. I can, we can barely afford food. He has 200 grand for a car, liquid for a car. Something is broken. None of the teachers at school have Ferraris. 
None of the, our university professors have Ferrari. No one else I know has a Ferrari. What do we have to do to break the matrix and, and find the money? This is all a lie. I want a Ferrari. And my friends were like, hmm, don't know. That's why I have Ferrari friends. Well, no, that's why I have Ferraris and they don't. That's why I now have 33 Ferraris. Because I want, I was envious. I was envious of this man. Most people don't care. But you turned envy into learning how to figure it out. Well, I, turned, yeah. I turned envy into anger and anger is power. But what we have people doing now, because people are, because they don't believe in themselves, because the matrix has dampened their soul, when they feel envious, because they want to level the playing field, which is all envy is, instead of trying to elevate themselves, they try and drag others down. So when people look at my life and they're envious of me, what they should say is, he's truly from the most humble possible socioeconomic beginnings. He is a person of color from a council estate, a single mother household. He's at the bottom. And he made it up to the highest echelon he's on the phone with Elon Musk and his ability. He can do it, I can do it. But they don't believe in themselves, so what they do instead is, well, I want to level the playing field, so I gotta drag him down. So envy when you're trying to drag others down is actually it's just laziness. Because you feel envious, but you don't have enough fire about yourself to go out there and attack the world and equal the playing field with bigger. So you want to equal the playing field with by dragging someone else down. It's just laziness. Lazy people. If you know good men, all they want to do is most of the time is work. What men who are good want to do most of the time is work. some version of work. Training, yeah. making money, organizing their life, getting their car clean, whatever. It's a degree of work. Women love fun. Women want fun all the time. And fun is where all the haramities appear. It's where all the, the, the negative orgones appear. You're only going to get in a fight if you're going out trying to have fun. You're all not going drugs and, and rape charges and physical violence and assassination that this all is linked to fun yeah if you want fun you're dragging all this shit wasting into your money life. we're yeah wasting Getting money drunk. yeah if you want to just work you can avoid a lot of bad things someone goes you want to go out i'm like no I, you can go here's the here's the address my team will take you have a great time go get much bitches go pop balls go do i'm gonna sit here on my computer i'm boring but i guess it generates millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars and millions of dollars so if you have goals you want to achieve i ask you what people do you have around you what network do you have around you of people you can sit down with and they are competent and they're not lazy and they're not stupid and they're not self-interested and they believe in the greater cause where you can work as a fraternity to achieve said goals mm -hmm. how are we going to do this yep. we now want to do this how shall we do it and we got it done this was another thing that's amazing to me about motivation i don't feel motivated newsflash Neither do I sometimes. You're not gonna always feel like doing it. You have to do it anyway, because it's your duty to do it because you don't want to be a fucking loser. That's the whole point. If you felt like doing it all the time, then there would be no magic to it. The magic is that you do it regardless of how you feel. What do you mean you need motivation? You don't, you don't need motivation. You have a duty to not be a loser anymore because the hole in the sky is closing. Am I hard on myself? Yes. Does that benefit me? I believe so. I'm hard on myself because life is hard. I think the it could be life, life be easier if you thought life was easy because isn't life what you see, not what it is. What's the point in having an easy life? Why would I want an easy life? If someone were to say to me, do you want an easy life? I'd say that sounds boring. I mean, did Genghis Khan want an easy life? Did Alexander the Great want an easy life? Did any of the men you can remember from history, any of the ones that actually matter, ever want an easy life? If I meet a man and he says, I want an easy life, I just want a stress-free life, I look at him and think, you're born to lose. You're born to lose, sir. You can have your stress-free life, and you can serve me my latte, and you can fuck off. Because you're, you're not made to, it, life is war. And it's gonna be stressful. And life always, isn't always war. Of course it is. Life is war, every single aspect of life is war. Not losing your temper in traffic on your way to a podcast is war. Trying to get a girl that the other guy wants is war. Trying to buy a Ferrari that everybody else can't afford is war. Training is war. Fighting is war. Life is war. I, I see war everywhere. When I see a big, beautiful oak tree, I don't see a big, beautiful oak tree. I see a tree that destroyed all the saplings around it and crushed them mercilessly. It's war. Life is war. That's why I'm gearing up for war so heavily because this war, when people ask me why I don't try and avoid it, I don't think most people understand that this war is coming for everyone. It can't be avoided. You're either gonna become someone like me who's fighting against it, the counterculture, or you're gonna buy into it and be a victim of it. 
I don't think any man who wakes up and accepts the garbage that the Matrix tells him that, yeah, it's okay to be depressed that we just talked about. Yeah, you should be running around doing perkies and Adderall and consuming porn and sleeping with a bunch of hooks. And yeah, go to school and get uh, education and get in debt and then go get a mortgage and get in debt and then nine to five and just slave away and you'll be retired when you're 74, it's gonna be fine. All the things they push, all the standardized mechanisms that a man's supposed to live his life by, I believe lead to crippling depression and sadness anyway. I don't think that makes anyone happy. Let me see. Dude, how do you have so much energy? Because huh. I don't waste my life force. <laughs> I haven't been to any stupid concerts. I don't take any stupid drugs. I'm not smoking weed like an idiot. I'm not cheering for a sports team. All of my life force is inside of me so I can master the seven styles of Aikido and tell the conservatives they're fucking dorks. Nerds. That's why, they're all nerds. <laughs> they're nerds. I'm full of life force. I'm the man who will struggle to the end. Uh -huh. I'm that guy. If an alligator were to get hold of me, not only would I snap its neck, but let's imagine 20 alligators got hold of me and they got lucky and somehow managed to decimate me until the exact, until the last second where I lost consciousness, I would be snapping necks of alligators. To the last second, I refuse to die. I'm that guy. I don't waste a ounce of my life force on anything that's unimportant, ever. So I refuse to be distracted. The Matrix wants to distract me. They've identified me, they're like, Andrew Tate is a threat. He's full of power and he believes in God and he's a slip talker and he motivates people and he has a bunch of money and he's big and strong and tall and handsome and charming and interesting. He's got a long Johnson. We have to distract this man. <laughs> we have to give him something he's interested in outside of fighting the Matrix. And they're trying to come at me with all these beauty queens and these sponsorship contracts and I'm resisting it all. No, I have a mission and I'm on the mission. We're talking to the people. We must be animated. We have a job to do. We must let the people at home know that enslavement's coming for their entire life and their bloodline unless they resist. Stop watching the fucking Super Bowl. Stop going to stupid concerts. And instead, be motivated about your family's future. You're going to feel happy as a man when you feel respected and needed. You yeah. need a purpose. People need to need you alive. If you're the kind of man who everyone's life can function perfectly fine if you get hit struck by lightning, then you're not going to feel happy. You're going to feel happy when you realize that people need you. And for them to need you, you have to be useful and you have to be competent. And whether that's children or your girlfriend or your parents or anyone else who cares about you, I think living for other people is one of the most beautiful things a man can do because it gives you a purpose, a higher purpose. And most of the men out there who live normal lives do exactly that. Why do they work jobs? They work jobs for other people. They don't do it for themselves. Yeah. They don't even keep most of the money. It goes on the kid, the wife, the house, and they're taking care of others. And that's a masculine imperative God has instilled in us. And it's a beautiful thing. And I think if you're going to do that, you may as well do it for your own offspring. Who else are you doing it for? My favorite food is pride. I do, I, and, I, and I don't know if that's a bad thing, but I love when my woman comes to me and goes, you know what? You just fix everything. They, they had you in jail, man. You, you, were, you were supposed to be dumb. They're lying about you all over the MSM. They're saying you're a human trafficker. They stole all your money. They froze all your banks. Why am I on a jet with roses? Because <laughs> I'm the top G. That's why. Because I'm that guy. She's like, you've just never failed. I've never seen you fail. So correct, I do not fail. So when I see somebody who doesn't have what they want, I know they haven't tried their hardest. And that's a constant universal fact. I've never seen somebody truly dedicate themselves to anything and fail. I've never seen anybody truly try and fail in history ever. So I wake up and go, let me do the math. If I never worked again, I could spend $422,000 a day for this guy. I have all the cards. Do I need one? No. You know, let me go have a coffee. Let me, let, me go, let me try and chill out today. And within 22 minutes, I'm back in my laptop. There's nothing else to do. There's nothing else to do. And I can't stop myself working as a person who doesn't need money. And then there's people with no money who don't I'm work. Yeah. I, it blows my mind, which is why the winners are winners and the losers are losers. Losers do a little bit of work and rest. Winners work as hard as possible and worry they're not working hard enough. It, it, it's just a separation of, of personality types. And, and, and it's almost like you can't save these people. So am I hard on myself? Yes. Will that change? No. Life is war. Life is hard. You're supposed to be hard on yourself. Perhaps most men would benefit from being a lot harder on themselves. I think I see a lot of men coming up with a lot of excuses for permanent failure. I see it all the time. Why? I can't pay my bills. Today. Okay, cool. Why? Oh, you know, because it's hard. It's all just sympathy bull. I don't, I don't want to hear it. It's garbage. It's hard. It's hard for everybody. And you're going to have to just be harder on yourself and pull it off or fail. And don't talk to me.
I, I, bro, it's, it's, I don't know what to say. I don't want to come across as a psychopath, but I, it's like life is difficult. I made this decision to be this man, and I understood exactly what it comes with. And a lot of people at the bottom see all of the benefits. They see our cars, see the private jets, they see the girls, they see the status, and they want all of that, but they don't want the negatives. And that's why they're never going to get it. Yep. Because on your way up, you're going to start getting hit with the negatives. They're going to be derailed. There's no way to get to the top without dealing with monumental levels of stress. I often say the reason a lot of people don't have the things they want is they couldn't handle the things they want. They couldn't handle the life that is required to get the things they want. They simply would get anywhere near it and start to panic and pussy out and just go on holiday and hide on a beach and delete their social media. Even comments. Bro, <laughs> mean comments. <laughs> I'm not about street problems. You think I give a about mean comments from some adult? <laughs> I, it's difficult for me to put into words how much I don't care. Mm. But there's people out there that do care. Yeah. And, and then they think, oh, I want to be like Top G, but you can't handle a comment on the internet. Bro, these, these people are born to lose. So you have to decide and you need to look in the mirror and really make a decision. Because I think perhaps if you want to build a life, choosing your life path and knowing which life path you want to go down is going to allow you to make, be the most effective in the construction of that life. If you say, I can't handle that stress, I want to be somewhere in the middle, then accept it, accept the good and bad that comes with that, accept the kind of life you want to build and go do it. But don't sit there and say, I want to be top G, I want to live this great life, and you're not prepared for war. So I said this even to a girl I was dating. I said, you're happy all the time. And I love that. Because I'm stressed. And I'm not complaining about being stressed. I think the masculine role is to wake up stressed. I wake up stressed. I wake up and I've got a bunch to do, a bunch of people to talk to, a bunch of money to make, etc. I'm stressed. I'm not miserable, but I'm certainly concerned all of the time. I'm focused all of the time. I'm always busy. I have a lot going on. I'm never relaxed. I'm never at peace. That's not who I am as a person. I think that you're supposed to be stressed, but I actually love feeling stressed. I do best it when I'm stressed. It pushes you. I've had 87 professional fights. For about three of those fights, for some reason, I wasn't nervous, and it really bothered me. So why am I not nervous? I, I like feeling nervous. I like being stressed. I, I fight better. I react quicker. Have you ever been jumped? Like you get scared, and someone jumps out at you. That's when you're the fastest you've ever been. Yep. So I think stress is a fantastic motivator. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. And my stress comes from the fact that I don't have enough. But is it for me, or is it for just being able to care about all the people I care about? If you don't have the mental control to force yourself to do push-ups, or force yourself to be happy and distract yourself with something asinine, or force yourself to change your own thoughts, you're going to sit there in a cycle of depression and sadness. I think one of the only things in life you truly have control over is your state of mind. You can't even control if your heart keeps beating. It can stop anytime it wants. You can't control the weather. You can't control if the police bust your door down. You can't control if the matrix decides to coordinate all of the media in the world to say you're something you're not. You don't have control over much, but you do have control over your state of mind and how you react to things. And I see God in all things. I see God in all outcomes and all situations. And I believe that he is the best of planners. and. He is giving us tests for us to learn and grow. And I never allow my state of mind to betray me. I've never lost control of my head. I've never felt depressed. I've never felt sad. I've never felt sorry for myself. I've never been able to get rid of a thought I didn't want to get rid of. And I think that we live inside of our own minds. And as long as you control your mind, you get to control your reality. So I don't think I've ever lost control. And I don't think I ever will lose control. No matter what happens to me, I'll always control my mind and control how I view it. And I view all things as a positive, no matter how negative they seem. I see the positive in everything, and I see the lesson in everything, and I see God in everything. So for that reason, I will confidently state I've never lost control because all that we have is our state of mind, and I own mine. I am something I, I said in my email recently. I said, you can give the average man a brand new Ferrari and a roadmap and a coffee and a full tank of gas and tell him the destination, success. And halfway along the drive, he'll quit. It's too long. No matter how well you set it up for people, they'll quit. One more. I've given you a Ferrari, a full tank of gas. I've given you the latte. I've given you a road map. I've given you a hot girl to sit next to you and play songs, do selfies. I've given you everything. Just drive the car. No, yeah, it's far. Mm. I don't have motivation. <laughs> You're a loser. You are a loser. If you do not win, you lose. What do you call someone who loses? A loser. The gap is closing. The elites hate you. You no longer have sexual consent. You're a permanent criminal in the eyes of the law. 
They're here to decimate you and your entire bloodline. You're 22 at the height of your capabilities, the height of your energy. You heal like Wolverine. It is Friday. Are you making money? What are you doing? Oh, there's this band. I really want to see this band. I guess you just deserve to lose, friend. I guess you're just an idiot. And I don't feel sorry for you. I guess you're just a dummy. And that's how I feel. So imagine how the elites feel. We're scum to these people. We are. I'm not a rich man. I'm just a poor man with loads of money. <laughs> I'm from a Luton Council. I wear diamond watches, bro. <laughs> yeah, you understand? Yeah, I'm just a poor man with billions of dollars. But it's scary when you start to understand how all these things really work. And I don't think the average man at home understands this. And if you start to understand it all, the last thing you will lack is motivation. How can you lack motivation? How can an antelope in the jaws of a tiger say, I lack motivation. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm horny. I want to jerk off. <laughs> Bro, you're a, they're, they're ripping out your throat in real time. You're bleeding out. Fight. Fight back. 